I actually have a slight connection to 1225. I've never had a chance to see the real engine in person. Oh my gosh. Your boiler just what? exploded. Uh, well, uh, it's just a hot bearing. It'll, it'll be fine. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. End of today's video, we are back in Stormworks, but today we are not checking out a ship. We are checking out a steam locomotive. This is Pierre Marquette. 1225 and one of the most impressive steam engines on Stormworks and we are also joined by Rare Preserver because we can't have a train video without Rare Preserver. See so yeah, you guys, let's get into the video. Alright, so here we have the steam locomotive in front of us. We've also got uh, Rare standing right next to one of the wheels here showing how large this locomotive is in comparison to a person in game and it's actually scaled accurately too which is really nice and yeah, it's one of the most popular locomotives in existence. There's a lot of great preserved locomotives out there and this is just one of them. So yeah, it looks fantastic and you may notice that this locomotive looks eerily similar to the one in the Polar Express because it was used to model off of that locomotive. So that model in the Polar Express is uh, is basically Pierre Marquette or 1225. So yeah. By the way, regarding how you're pronouncing the name, I've always heard it, I've always heard it be called Pierre. Pierre Marquette. Well, that's uh, I like think that's French. French. Yeah, French. Um, but here we are. We're in the cab, and look at this. This is fantastic. We got a lot of gauges. We've got a lot of buttons, key switches, and also the uh, the throttle levers. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing started. I know you already have the owner's manual with you, basically the tutorial yeah. guide to get this thing started up. So I'll let you do your thing. But first, I'm actually gonna light it up in here because um, we should. Oh, wrong button. There we go. Awesome. Right okay. Away. By the way, interesting thing, the part of the boiler you see here in Railroader's terms is known as the back head. Mm, the, yeah, because that's head. the back Excuse of the head. of the boiler there. Yeah, and right here, this would get this in a real steam locomotive and on the real 1225, this gauge is actually glass. Yeah, I'm just really blown away with the level of detail. While you get this thing started, I'm going to do a walk around if you want to give us some information yeah. on this uh, locomotive itself. I know that you uh, yeah. actually have information directly from the owners who uh, run and restore this engine. Yes, in fact, if I've got the information from the Steam Railroading Institute's website, which I have given to Jesse, if he can link it in the description in case y'all want to know more. But uh, tw Pierre Marquette 1225 is the most largest piece of equipment in the Institute's collection and is one of the largest operating steam locomotives in the state of Michigan. And as I said in Rails Unlimited when we reviewed 1225 there, the engine was built in October of 1941 by Lima in Lima, Ohio for the Pierre Marquette Railway. The locomotive was used for about 10 years in revenue service. And um, as for some specifications regarding the engine, 1225 is uh, 101 feet long. That's both the engine and its tender. Total weight's about 440 tons, 5,000 pounds of tractive horsepower. It takes about eight hours to generate a full head of steam in the boiler. Hopefully we don't have to spend eight hours doing that in Stormworks. And the boiler operates at 245 pounds of, of uh, pressure. Tender holds 22 tons of coal, 22,000 gallons of water, and the engine burns one, t one ton of coal for every 12 miles and 150 gallons of water per mile. And the engine cost about $245,000 back when it was originally built, which is now, when adjusted for modern inflation, $2.5 million if wow. they were to build it today. Yeah. That is really impressive. You know, this is kind of a testament to modern engineering. Well, modern engineering at the time. I mean, oh, this absolutely. is just a bunch of mechanical moving parts. And it really is impressive to see that, you know, as humans, we can build stuff like this to get us from point A to point B. And we get to preserve stuff like this, you know. Also, by so, the way, our boiler temperature is dropping. Just a heads up. Probably doing it with being so cold out here. Yeah, probably. Um, right. So maybe we yeah, can yeah. fix that. Yeah. Oh, there's the boiler temperature. It's going. Yep, 20, uh, 21. Now we're going. Okay, why don't we just leave that open, actually, because that seems to be working. <laughs> and 25, 26, 27, 28. There we go. Now we got something heating up in there. That's perfect. <laughs> He's got the steam coming out of the cylinders, of course. Oh, I got to see this. Wow. It's in real life, it wouldn't be black. Yeah. Because the black smoke is a jettisoned via the smoke box on the front. 
But that's now, still the really coming cool. coming out of the cylinders would be white. Yeah, but it's still really cool to see that actually going there, you know? Even with that little tiny aspect of, of detail there, it's really, really nice because, you know, you can only go so far in the Stormworks, and I think, you know, the person that built this has is, is done a really good job. I mean, just look at this. Get on quick, it's about to yep. off. Actually, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna close the door. There we go. And it's And off. we're moving. Here we go. So, there it is, folks. We got this massive locomotive on the move and as you can see just fantastic stuff so you know what why don't you keep going ahead i'm gonna get a uh, nice perspective of this i actually have a slight connection to 1225 i've never had a chance to see the real engine in person until oh my gosh your boiler just what? exploded uh well that's uh, just a hot bearing it'll be it'll be fine all right and we're back with an observation car so let me go ahead and Connected, perfect. Yes, it connected on its own. It's a ghost train. No. Well, there may or may not be theories online about that anyways. Wow. This okay, is so like, really well done. Holy cow. And to be fair, the observation car interior in the movie looked a bit for a little bit more 40s than it would for a normal Pullman of it this design. Mm -hmm. This but is very again, nice I like though. The deco stuff. I don't have anything against it. <laughs> All right, besides, let's let's try to get this thing started up, but this time let's not blow the boiler. I remember one of the firemen who ran Union Pacific's famous articulated engines, the big boys. I remember uh, him saying a story in a documentary where he actually they must have had a problem with the mechanical stoker, so he used the a shovel to keep the boiler fired. Really? And the, tra and, the, and the draft force from the fire pulling air in was so strong, it sucked the shovel out of his hand and into the firebox, and it was so hot, it actually melted the shovel. Wow. That, that is that's incredible. That tells you how hot those fires have to be to keep engines of that size moving. Yeah, and, and down in Essex, I've been in the cab of their locomotive Twice, actually. It's nowhere near the size of 40. It's nowhere near the size of that, but the heat on that is just incredible. So you can imagine on a larger locomotive like this one, or as you were saying, that would be just outrageously yeah. hot. This reminds me so much of TVRM right now. I mean, and obviously, that's... yeah, well, right here, I'm standing right here, and I remember getting a shot of the train just kind of sitting right at this angle. So really interesting okay i'm gonna quickly hop on board uh, i'm gonna have to no clip because i'm not gonna be able to make that jump there but there we go and we should be set speed is increasing to about five miles per excellent slowly rising i'm gonna shut this door on this side so none of us fall out i'm gonna just get a nice view outside here just beautiful on, hang on these are doors meant for like cabinets where they would store their stuff within the tender oh They're not meant yeah, this was always... Oh, yeah, open. I see that. There's a fire extinguisher in there. I thought that these were doors just to uh, stop these, people no, from no, going these out. These engines, only, in, only like out in the Midwest did you find steam locomotives where the cabs were fully enclosed. Midwest and Canada usually had them like that. But engines like this, most of the time, they were all, the back of the cab here between the cab and the tender were always open. This is so cool. I mean, actually starting up, this steam locomotive and knowing that it's running like a real steam locomotive not like oh you press a button and the computer tells it to go but no this is actually running in a simulation kind of like this it's so cool i find that really really cool yeah but at this point we're doing the equivalent of cruising regarding the steam engine as far as speed goes it's going at about well speed's slowly increasing to about 20. if you look at videos of when they restore these engines when they take the cylinders out they, they have to be as snug as possible within the actual cylinder casing. And that's so the steam pressure can force the inner cylinder piece back and forth to move the rods. Now, do they have a gasket there that prevents the steam from escaping? Because um, if you I think, think of, multiple, yeah. I, I think there's multiple gaskets. If you look at how they restore steam engines or documentaries on how they've done it with other engines, I think it shows the cylinders and what all they need to do. I think even with 4014, um, Ed Dickens showed that. And it, they, they, the cylinders have to be 
again, it's a very, very tight fit in order for mm-hmm. them to get them back in once they're taken out. And that's like that for every steam locomotive, more or less. Wow, this is a fantastic shot here. I mean, when you see this in the video, I know that obviously you're operating the train right now, but this is just fantastic. You've got that terrain in the background, you got a forest following that, and then you have this bridge, um, or this railroad bridge, and then you have the train just approaching nice and slowly, making its way through the terrain. It's just awesome. And I'm gonna turn the uh, tender lights off because. And I think this is like the first train we've ever reviewed in Stormworks on a video. All right, so here it is. Here is 1225 passing by us here. Really, really awesome shot. Look at that. Beautiful shot there. Just beautiful. Heading out to open ocean somehow. Notice how the smoke is just passing overhead. I would imagine in real life that would also come down into the cab if that was open. Uh, not necessarily. It, you'd have mo the most you'd have is cinders coming down, but in reality, in real life, it wouldn't be a straight up opening like this. In fact, the real life hatch on the top of the cab roof opens up on a hinge. It opens up like, kind of like a hatch would open up in like the floor, in like a floor or something, as opposed to a sliding door hatch. I'm actually gonna go ahead, hop over to the car, take a look at what it looks like. Look at that, that is awesome. Just to be in this car, seeing not only some of the smoke going past, but you've got the uh, the snow and there it is. Look at that, just beautiful. I gotta go out look to at the it back. At night. I gotta go out to the back of the car here for a second. Just awesome. Do you think you could kick up the snow just a little bit? Sure, of course. Wow, just really, really awesome shot here. Because you've got the, uh, the rear red light so all that snow is just illuminated in red as it passes by. That in real life would be a kind of uh, marker light, more yeah. or less. Real, a lot of railroads, a lot of the older, older um, passenger cars would have that. And a lot of old cabooses had those marker lights as well. Even these steam engines had them on the front. They had marker lights like you'd see on ships, but instead of one side being green and the other red, Sometimes they would both be green, sometimes they'd both be red, sometimes they'd be white, and I think even sometimes they were blue. All right, here we go. Now I'm in the cab. Okay, so I'm gonna get this, uh... Okay, so the stuff. max speed is about 70 to 71. Awesome. So, at this point we've got it at, really it's maximum operating speed and pressure, perhaps. Yeah, 162, so... I mean, really, the boiler pressure on the real engine was about 245, but I guess in Stormworks there's limitations. But to be fair, you know what? Let's see. Did I just uh -huh. hear an explosion? Uh, yes, I did. I know what it is. It's the boil rate. If you don't, if you push the boil rate up, it messes up the boiler. Well, folks, now we've got to slow this thing down. And stop it. Or we could recover. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe it's How far out are we? Um, oh, we're pretty far out. We're in the middle of nowhere, my friend. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, uh... Well, you know what this means. Time to get out and repair the, uh, repair the engine. I think we have a possible kit over here we can use. Let me see. Yes, we do! We have a welding torch, so we can repair it. The problem awesome. is, we don't know, I don't know where the actual boiler part is that's damaged. Plus, it looks like it actually is like a real boiler. There is- Oh one. gosh, help! You need to fit, there needs to be a way to uh, vent steam so this doesn't happen while you're sitting still. Well, that was, a uh, different. Yes, it was. Time to figure out what went wrong. Hey, you want to go ahead and just Over look out? Here, no clip on the other side. You're at the tender. Uh, you know, um, you probably just want to look out towards the horizon. Sir, why did you spawn a tsunami? Who knows? It probably wasn't me. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't. So but how you know, are we going to survive this one? Sir, you're the one who spawned it, so uh, this is on you. All I can do is just sit in my seat and hold on to, like, everything. Yeah, I'm going to the car, so... Well, I mean, the only good news about this is the fact that this thing weighs about 400-something tons, so it's not like that thing's gonna move it. 
Hell, an engine that got caught in a hurricane on the Florida East Coast couldn't be moved by the freaking wall of water that sucker produced. My advice would be to disconnect that car, just saying. Because if it gets flipped off the track, well, the engine's going with it. Oh. Wait. My car? Oh, no. You, no. Get me out of here. Too late. Oh, my gosh. All right, bub. You signed up for it. You signed the waiver. I signed the- I didn't sign the waiver for this! Quick! Oh no! No! <laughs> no! Alright, well, that has been 1225. Um, it survived a tsunami, which is fantastic, but it did blow up multiple times. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye!